Hello, Ashita. Good morning from Tel Aviv. My name is Liav, and today I will share with you everything you need to know about CD CDK. But first of all, a little bit of background. My name is Liav, as I said earlier. I'm an engineering team lead at Firefly, and also a passionate tech blogger about DevOps and cloud. Today, I will share with you how CDKTF helped us close the gap between the R&D and the DevOps team in my organization. The modern developer faces a lot of challenges when it comes to deploying a new service to production. Not all of them are the code itself. Before we deploy a new application, we need to make sure that it's written in the highest standard, fully tested, monitored, highly scalable, resilient, and of course, it's infra covered with infrastructure as code. We want the resources that our, infra, that our application relies on to be covered with infrastructure as code. However, have you ever encountered a situation where one of your team members or colleagues just doesn't like to write infrastructure as code, um, that it is struggles to understand the concept behind Terraform that he has difficulties with the HCL language. I was such a developer myself. And back then, I used to approach my team lead for help or guidance. And today, as a team lead, I hear that a lot. So what do I do? I seek help from the DevOps teams. But as you all know, DevOps teams are the busiest persons in the organizations. They are always working on the most important task in the world right now, and they cannot help you. Maybe they will have a slot, but they have this huge backlog waiting for them. And they will send you some links or references, but that's not but it's that's that's not the help that you need. What we are left with, we are left with infrastructure as code becoming a bottleneck when we want to product it to move a new service to production. But before I will show you how CDKTF helped us close this gap. Let's rewind the infrastructure as code revolution timeline. It all began with AWS launching the cloud compute services in 2006. That was a great release that changed the tech industry forever. Now developers can focus on the business logic instead of maintaining the servers the applications run on. In 2009, my favorite programming language Golang was first appeared, which Ashikop adapted and released Terraform in 2014. Terraform is the first unified infrastructure as code tool that lets you control and create resources in all external services with, with a configuration language called HCL. The external services are called provider, and you can manage your resources there with the HCL language. Let's say I want to create a Lambda function. I create it using Terraform, also Google Storage Bucket, but not only cloud resources. I can create Cloudflare Zone or Datadog Monitor. Everything can be created with Terraform. Terraform become a standard and consensus. In 2021, Firefly was founded. Firefly discovers the entire footprint of your cloud environments and SaaS application and enables you to codify it in seconds. In 2022, HashiCorp released the CDK ETF, which is a wrapper that covers up that covers up the Terraform and lets you write Terraform code in your own favorite programming language. But do you remember the problem I was talking about? Let's say I didn't receive the help that I need from the DevOps team. So as a lazy developer like myself, what do you do? You go online, of course, and you Google Terraform code for EC2 instance. Or should we do it the modern way? Let's ask ChatGPT for a Terraform code for EC2 instance. We get this example, which is fine. As you can see, we define a provider and then EC2 instance, we use, which uses some Amazon image and has a certain instance type, but that's not good enough. A good Terraform code will contain variables that will help us to control our resources from outside of the code. Let's say I want to change the instance type. With that code, I will need to commit a new version, 
and then deploy my instance instead of using a variable and control it, control it externally. Also, a good Terraform code will use modules. Modules groups resources under the same code and let you redeploy them over and over again with different configurations every time, and then our, our code become reusable. But writing good models is hard. One can say, go online. There are a lot of public good models out there. That's true. But first of all, the majority of the public good models are focuses for cloud providers. Not only, not every resource we need to deploy is from the cloud. But let's say we want to deploy a new cloud resource. Not every component requires the same infrastructure. And by doing that, we are having difficulties to use models because they create some redundant resources or become more complex because we need to have conditionals and we have to have conditionals which will, will make the infrastructure and the code almost impossible to trace and maintain. Now, we found another difficulty, but we are more secure with what we want. So let's sum up. What do we want to achieve? We are sure that we want to manage our infrastructure with code. That's the, that's the basic. However, we want to let developers focus on the strongest skill. We don't want them to learn another programming language. We want them to, to or to, to be to crawl for any models online. We want them to focus on what they are doing best on our on their daily routines. We want to write code according to the best practices, even if it's our if it's the business logic load or the infrastructure code. We want the code to be reusable, explainable and configurable easily. We want to make the developers aware of their own components infrastructure. Let's say we have a crisis. Not every crisis is uh, due to an error of the application. It can also be an infrastructure error. We want our developers to be able to understand which components their infrastructure relies on and be able to trace them and adjust their settings or trace their logs in order to solve the problem in production. But mostly, the, and finally, the most important thing, we want to reduce the overhead between DevOps and R&D teams and make the, pro the communication between those parties as healthy and productive as possible. So does anyone know any tool that can help us with that? CDKTF comes to the rescue. CDKTF is as I said, a wrapper to write Terraform code in your own favorite programming language. Yes, yes, that's not a dream. And now it becomes infrastructure as actual code. It also supports all the Terraform core capabilities like module cores, data resources, locals, and much more. Now you can manage complexity through the abstraction. Let's say we have some, a lot of components. Each one of them can have their own stack written in their favorite programming language. And now we can consume shared resources, let's say database password or VPC ID, and deploy our infrastructure for the certain component without any dependencies or a large DevOps repositories. The business logic and the infrastructure are now combined. They are under the same repo written by the same developer in their own favor in their own favorite programming language and IDE. It's so much easier that the developers now can be aware of ex of the exact resources need that their application require. And also we're receiving the independent of R and D, which can help us increase the developer's productivity. Uh, let's let's say that now the developers can write the infrastructure is called in its own favorite programming language, in its own I favorite IDE for the service. Everything is managed is managed together. And now it's much easier to handle the infrastructure is called step when we're moving to production. So one can say, wow, that sounds too good. That sounds amazing. What's the magic about it? When we're looking at for a higher level, the CDKTF magic concept is quite simple. You take the resources written in Terraform 
in Terraform programming language that you like, let's say Golang or Python, the CDKTF converts it into a JSON Terraform representation, and then we just apply it. That's it. I know it sounds it sounds amazing, but that's the truth. Yes, they when you go deep dive, it's a little bit more complicated, but from an IR perspective, we just convert the programming language code we wrote into a Terraform representation and just apply it. CDKTF, CDKTF is one of a CDK project that uh, that now it's extremely powerful. There are a lot of projects like CDKTF. One of them is CDK for Kubernetes. CDK for Kubernetes is a CNCF sandbox project, which also supports multiple languages. It also supports a custom missile definition in Kubernetes. It converts the resources to a pure YAML file, not a JSON file like CDKTF. But unlike the CDKTF, it does not apply the resources themselves. We don't have the provider definition. It just gives you immutable files of the service of the resources you define for your Kubernetes clusters. If we want to use Kubernetes provider with code, I will recommend you to use CDKTF and the Kubernetes provider to control and maintain your resources as well, and not just create immutable files for them. Now, I will show you a quick demo of a simple architecture. We will create an SSM parameter and the Lambda function. A Lambda function will use an IAM role and an ECR image from an ECR repository as data sources. Just a second. You can see my screen. Yes. So, here we have our code. This is the code for our Lambda. As you can see here, I have the SRC and the application. But that's a very simple Lambda, and we won't focus on that. Let's focus on the infrastructure. I already did CDKTF init, which creates a skeleton of code that will create my infrastructure. This is the main file. As you can see here, I define a new stack. In the constructor of my stack, which is written here, you can see that I define an AWS provider, just like Terraform. It looks a little bit familiar, isn't it? I also define data resources for my IAM wall and ECR repository. One, it's, it looks like Terraform, but for me as a developer, it's written in Python and it's, and it's much easier to understand. <laughs> I also call an external module that I wrote that will create SSM parameter for me. This module is written in HCL, but I can call it easily with CDKTF and it will work, some, uh, it will work, work smoothly. Here I created the resources, I created a SSM parameter with a value CDKTF is amazing. I can also define some locals. I take the data resources and and create an image URI. I also create the SSM, I also extract the SSM ARN as a local for my Lambda function. And of course, and most importantly, explicit resource definition like we have in Terraform. Here, I created a Lambda function with some environment variable based on image, image that I provide, and the role ARN. And I can define output as well, just like in a normal Terraform code, but again, this is Python code, and it's amazing. As you can see here, I define some empty tags. And I define an aspect, a hook, that will run every time I deploy. And if resource is taggable, we will, we will add some default tags. As you can see here, I will head created by Python, Python CDK. Now, all we are left with is just deploy our new resources so we can do it will take some time in the meantime i will tell you that cdktf code can be tested yes we can write unit tests for my for our terraform code here i have some simple tests that make sure 
that I always create a Lambda function. I'm testing that I always have this resource. I'm also testing that I always have the data resource of the IAM role my Lambda uses. And I can check that my properties of the Lambda never change. Let's say here, the package type should be image all the time. Let's imagine that I have a complicated component that I'm afraid will change over time. I can test it, I can have tests that runs every time, make sure that no matter, no matter any addition someone is, ma is making, my, co my production environment will always be safe. As you can see here, we receive the output of the CDK apply, which looks like Terraform plan. Here we can see that we're creating a Lambda function and an SSM parameter, just like we wanted. But again, with code and not configuration language. When I will approve the changes, CDKTF will will create a form, it will apply the code for me. Let's wait a little bit. And then we will examine the infrastructure that has been created for me. As you can see here, a lot of file, a lot of new file has been created. CDKTF output is a CDKTF managed directory. As we can see here, the dot terraform directory, which look familiar. It also downloaded my model and the required provider. And it also created a TF state for me. That's a TF state. It looks the same as Terraform. It's amazing. Here I can see the output I created and the resources that I'm using, whether they are data resources or actual resources. If we want to try to get the SSM parameter value, I will see that the CDKTF is amazing. Let's try to change something. I will change the, C, the, CD, the SSM parameter value. Then I will redeploy it. Again, it can take a little bit time, just as Terraform plan. But when it's done, we will see that we have just one change instead of two resource creation in, our, in the first deployment. When I approve the change, we can see that the value of the SSM parameter will change. And now, if we want to get the value, we see that the value has changed. Wow, amazing. Now, let's see CDK for Kubernetes. Here, again, it looks kind of the same. I define the chart, and the chart will create in its constructor function a service and a deployment. If I will run the It's making this the synthesization process and I'm and I'm and now I have a new file with the explicit YAML of my service and deployment, which I can take using the kubectl command. My resources has been created successfully. It's so much easier for me to understand it. So as we saw, CDKTF is amazing and powerful tool. From my perspective, I think that 
an organization who manage the, inf the core infrastructure networking and databases in one Terraform repository written in HCL managed by the DevOps teams. That's their daily routine to handle HCL code, and they should be responsible for the core resources for my production process uh, environment. Sorry. The team, the R and D teams can create a lot of stacks for their own services using CDKTF, and then apply it using uh, when consuming the required variables from outsourcing. But that's just my advice. Either way, where you choose CDKTF or not, in Firefly, we tend to say, may your infrastructure never drift again. Today, I will say to you, may your, inf may your well written infrastructure never drift again. Thank you very much. <laughs>